Hi everybody. So now we're going to go back to something which we introduced when we were looking at examples of groups and uh, study it a little bit more closely. And that's um, the class of permutation groups. And in particular, we're, we're going to start by looking again at the group of all permutations of a finite set, uh, which goes under the name the symmetric group. So um, let's start with the recalling a few things which we have talked about briefly before. So Generally speaking, if you have a set X, um, then a permutation of that set, which means just a rearrangement of the elements, uh, is given by a bijection F from the set to itself. Now, um, X can be, in this situation, any set. So, for example, the function F from Z to Z, which sends F of X to X plus 1, is, by this definition, a permutation of the integers. It's the permutation which takes every integer and shifts it one uh, step to the right. And um, alternatively, if our set X has two elements, let's say the elements 1 and 2, then the function F, which takes 1 to 2 and 2 to 1, is a permutation of that set. Um, so... Uh, we remember that a bijection is a, is a function which is both injective and surjective. So every element in X goes to exactly one element in X itself. And so fundamentally, it's just a rearrangement. And um, the permutations of a set form a group, S sub X, where the group operation is composition of functions. And the identity element is the identity map. So remember that the identity map takes an element of the set X and just gives it back to you. And um, the reason such functions form a group is because, first of all, composition of functions is associative. Uh, whether you do, I mean, it all. whenever you have F, G, and H, you always do H first, then G, then F, no matter how you group these things together. And uh, the inverse, because F is bijective, by the inverse function theorem, we know that F has an inverse function. And... Um, in the special case where X is a finite set with N elements, uh, then the collection of bijections, there are N factorial bijections, because here we have our set X. It has elements X1 down to Xn. And our function, we have to send X1 to one of these elements. So we have N choices for X1. x2 can go to any other element except wherever we sent x1. So we have n minus 1 choices for x2. And when we get down to xn, we've sent, we've already decided where all the other elements are going. And so we don't have any choices left. We have to send xn to whatever's left over. And so by what sometimes is called the multiplication principle, this is n times n minus 1 times 1, which is n factorial possible permutations. And if we're working with a set with n elements, we might as well just assume that it's the set of numbers from 1 up to n, because if we had a general set, we can just number the elements from 1 up to n, work with 1 up to n, and then go back to figure out what elements we were speaking of. So when we consider permutations of the set of numbers from 1 up to n, that group is called the symmetric group on n elements, or sometimes the symmetric group on n letters. And the standard notation for it is S sub n, and it has n factorial elements. So uh, just as a sort of note on calculation, you can write it. One way to write permutations is, if sigma is a permutation in Sn, is to make a little table like this, where the first row are the elements of the set from 1 up to n, and the second row tells you where each element goes. So this is the, uh, this is the way of writing the permutation 
which sends 1 to x1, 2 to x2, 3 to x3, and so on, where x1 down to xn is just the set that's the same set as the set 1 up to n. It's just a rearrangement, a permutation. Um, and then if you want to use this notation and you want to compute the product of permutations using composition, you just have to remember that when you, if sigma is given by this permutation, so it takes 1 to 2, 2 to 1, 3 to 4, and 4 to 3, and tau takes 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 and 4 to 1, then the product, this is going to, we have to work out where 1, 2, 3, and 4 go. But to do that, because it's composition of functions, you do the inner one first. You do the tau permutation first. So tau of 1 is 2, and tau of 2 is 1. Sorry, sigma. Tau of 1 is 2. Sigma of 2 is 1. So in the product, 1 goes to 1. Tau of 2 is 3. That's here. Sigma of 3 is 4. So 2 goes to 4. Tau of 3 is 4. Sigma of 4 is 3. So 3 gets left alone. And tau of 4 is 1. And sigma of 1 is 2. So 4 goes to 2. And if you look here, you see that this is, again, a permutation of the set 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, maybe just for the sake of one other calculation, what's the inverse of this permutation, uh, which is, um, which is uh, sigma. What's the inverse of it? Well, one way to work out the inverse is to um, flip the rows and then sort them. So uh, the inverse, the way you figure it out is you, you look, uh, if, if sigma takes 2 to 1, then sigma inverse takes 1 to 2. If sigma takes 1 to 2, then sigma inverse takes 2 to 1. If sigma takes 3 to 4, then sigma inverse takes 4 to 3. And if sigma takes uh, 4 to 3, then sigma inverse takes 3 to 4. And, and actually, one way to work that out would be to take, just to flip the rows and write it as 2, 1, 4, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then sort the upper row into order. So we take the 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 4, 4, 3. And again, we find uh, the inverse of an element. And then if you wanted to check, you could see that sigma times sigma inverse is the identity. 1 goes to 2 goes to 1. 2 goes to 1 goes to 2. 3 goes to 4 goes to 3. 4 goes to 3 goes to 4. So the product is actually the identity. Uh, and of course, the identity is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Four.